I recently decided to get one of these terminal displays. Now, apparently this was a Kickstarter a while back, but I've been avoiding Kickstarter, so I wasn't aware of it until I saw an advert for one, now that these things are available to the general public. And it seemed like it could be just the thing I need to do one very specific and simple job. You see, over the last year or so, you might have seen rumours about a potential product from Apple, a wall-mounted smart home display thing. A reading through those got me thinking that if that did come out, what would I use it for? And there's only really two things I can think of right now. The first one would be to display the family calendar of upcoming events. And then the other would be to display a, a detailed hour by hour weather forecast. And that's pretty much it. Now, whilst both those things can, of course, be accessed via phones, tablets, computers, apps, all that kind of stuff, an always on non password protected device that brings those permanently into to the real world and sticks on the fridge door has a lot of appeal for me. Well, it looked like the terminal would fulfil this requirement now, and of course it's got to be a heck of a lot cheaper than any potential Apple device. Plus, since it uses an e-ink display, which is a technology that I really like, the battery can go for months between charges. And I'm happy to say that after setting this up, it is now doing everything I wanted. Of course, that's not the full story. Whilst it did work out, getting things to this point was quite a bit more complicated than I'd anticipated. So let's go back to the unboxing and work forward from there. OK, first off, I've got to mention this cost me £123, including the larger internal battery, since that was only another £8 on the price. I thought it made sense to include it. Now, if you want to visit the manufacturer's website, just search for the word terminal, miss out the vowels and you should find it. But I've got to say that whenever I show a current product in a video, quite a few people will say, this is an advert. So from now on, whatever the item I show is, however good it is, however much I like it, I'm going to tell you, do not buy this. No manufacturer would ever want me to say that in an advert for their product. So clearly it's not an advert when I say you should not buy this. The rather workmanlike packaging hints that this is very much the first product from a new operation, and you'll see more of that as the video progresses. The device itself has a 7.5 inch screen, and in the case of the black one that I've got here, that's got a slightly rubberized, textured type finish to the case. It charges via USB-C, and the larger battery, when fully charged, can last for up to six months between charges. The controls consist of a power switch and a single button. The screen is not a touch screen, so all the interaction with the device is controlled by that one button on the back. But really, it's not a device you're supposed to interact with physically, it's just a display for pre-selected information which is done via a web interface. So, of course, the first job is to get this thing connected up to the internet, which in my case proved to be easier said than done. It seemed to get itself in a bit of a weird loop. It kept putting up this rather worrying message, which didn't mean an awful lot. Resetting it had no effect. I ended up looking online to see what was going on. It turns out it doesn't like 2.4 slash 5 gigahertz dual Wi-Fi systems, or at least not the one that I've got, and therefore I had to put it on a 2.4 gigahertz only network and do a soft reset and all that kind of stuff. And eventually I got it connected up. But for a while there, I was convinced that I'd broken it. And then it did a firmware update. Anyway, in the end, once that had all resolved itself, I did manage to get my calendar to show itself on the screen. So things were looking up. Now, the web interface does look smart. And once you get used to it, it makes sense. However, getting used to it is a pretty steep learning curve. And initially, it is quite a bit baffling in places. It's not simple to describe this thing in just a few sentences, but I'm going to give it a go. OK, so first you need to choose what you want displayed on the screen of your device from a number of predefined plugins. Think of these as equivalent to an app on a phone, but here they're called plugins. Now, if you're thinking of buying a terminal, remember, don't, but if you were, then I'd strongly recommend looking through these apps first to see if there's anything in here that's suitable for your needs, because if there isn't, then this device is not going to be an awful lot of use. Now, once you have chosen a few apps for your device, sorry, plugins, they'll go into a playlist, and this shows the order in which these are going to be displayed on the screen. So here's a few examples of things that I tried out on mine. Of course, there are plenty more besides. Now, in addition to the official plugins, there are user-created ones too. These ones are called recipes, but for the most part, they act the same as the official plugins and can be added to a playlist just the same. 
Now, in these user-created plugins, sorry, recipes, I did manage to find a much better weather app for my requirements. The official one didn't have enough information. This one was called Weather Chum, and it gave me the hour-by-hour -hour information that I required. However, because I naturally wanted to show the weather in an area other than North Carolina, I needed to enter custom latitude and longitude coordinates, which meant modifying the plugin. And this is called forking the recipe. Now, I hope everyone's still keeping up with the terminology. So to fork a recipe i needed a developer edition account which i then had to unlock for another 20 dollars. once this was all done it's working fine so there's no criticism on the results but it's just not your typical one click stuff that we've perhaps become accustomed to with products from larger companies one thing to bear in mind is that the items that are in your playlist will only get swapped out on the screen at a minimum interval of every five minutes. So, for example, you might glance over at your terminal and see a display like this one. This is counting down the days to an event. It's the end of the world, but don't tell anyone I told you. But anyway, you might be looking at that and then thinking, I wonder what the weather's like today. And you've got to wait for up to five minutes for that page to come around again. Or alternatively, you could press that button on the back and it will skip forward to the next item in your playlist. But then imagine you've got four things in a playlist. You could be 15 minutes away from the right one showing up on the screen or three button presses. And this is why it is not a bad idea to simultaneously display multiple plugins on one screen. There are eight different layout templates available, which can show up to four different plugins at once on the same screen. And confusingly, these templates are called plugins as well. So a plugin with a plugin applied to it is called a mashup in the playlist. Brilliant. Anyway, each of the original plugins, you know, the app equivalent type, they've got four different versions. There's the full screen one, there's the quarter screen, there's the half vertical and the half horizontal. And each of these, of course, has to throw away some of the information or rearrange things to fit the available space or resolution. As an example, have a look at how the weather app on this one displays differently between the four different screen layout configurations. And getting everything displaying just how you want does take a lot of time and patience. With the screen only updating every so often, the app's only pulling data across at whatever interval you've set, it can take quite a while to see if the layout that you've decided upon actually works how you wanted it to. However, when it's all sorted out, it looks really good. And for me, nothing beats an e-ink display for a job like this, because the less frequently the device wakes up to pull the data from the internet and refresh the screen, the longer the battery can last. I found that rather than having a playlist producing a slow carousel of displays, I decided just to have one screen that showed everything all the time. Now, if you did have a playlist of multiple plugins, you can skip forward to the next one with the button on the back, but you can also skip backwards if you configure that and double tap will skip it back to the previous page if you've just missed something you wanted to look at. But I think this is a device best used hands off. And that means that while setting it up to display your photos is a fun novelty, it's perhaps not the best use of it. Now, I think I should mention that with regard to those recipes, the user generated plugins, they don't all just work with one click. A lot of them do need things like external APIs to pull data from, and it's down to you to get access to that data source by having an account with the data provider, sometimes at quite an expense. I'm thinking of things like real-time train information and weather services, etc. But if you're really into customization, you can go to town on that side of things. Although it can feel at times that you bought some kind of dev kit rather than a consumer product. And I suppose it's both really, but speaking as the typical consumer rather than a programmer, the overlap between these things is a little bit confusing at times. Okay, so moving away from the software and onto the hardware side of things, and the first thing is that whilst it has a stand and a picture hook hole, the way I wanted to mount mine was by putting it on the door of my fridge. And this is how it was displayed in use in one of the pictures on the website. So I assumed, therefore, not unreasonably, I think, that the device would be magnetised on the back. I assumed wrongly. So therefore, it was down to me to acquire some appropriate magnets and stick them on the back of the case before I could put this on the door. And of course, it's worth mentioned that doing this then puts that button on the back out of reach and I'll have to take it down every few months to charge it. 
So whilst this feels very much like a version 1 device, it does do what I need. But of course, there's room for improvement. I'd suggest adding some magnets on the back, moving the USB port to the side, increasing the number of buttons to two, one for forward, one for back, and putting those on the side of the case as well. And while the web interface does what it needs to, it feels very much like something created by programmers for other programmers. If the eventual aim is to sell this device to a wide audience, then the user experience would benefit from a good rethink. Plugins with different plugins that apply layouts to plugins with recipes and forks. It's all a bit of a muddle. But I did manage to muddle through it and get the results that I wanted and automatically updating family agenda and hour by hour weather forecasts that goes on the fridge door. So whilst it all worked out for me in the end, whatever you do, don't buy one. But if you do, you know where to get one. Search for terminal without the vowels in it. Anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.